All right, we're in the Jags' den with Coach Will Smith, Spain Park head baseball coach, coming off their area championship, 5-1 and one record. Uh, team responded uh, coming off of Tuesday night, area champ. So to wrap up that series for us. Yeah, so, you know, we, we go over to uh, Chelsea uh, uh, Tuesday week. Uh, didn't, didn't play particularly well. They did uh, <clears throat> and, and came out on the short end. And then we're faced with a – I guess the realization of we were already in the playoffs and and we were playing for – we were actually playing for the one seed. They were playing not only for the one seed but also to get into the playoffs that night. Um, and I'll be real honest with you. I mean, I, <laughs> George knows this, but um, it was kind of an awkward day, like I guess an awkward two days because as good as the season's been, you know, I keep telling myself like if I would have – at the beginning of the season, if, if somebody would have come to me and said, hey – uh, after five area games, you're you're going to be four and one. You'll play the last one. Uh, you're already locked in for a spot, uh, but the last one you'd be playing at home uh, for uh, the area championship. I would have taken it, uh, but as poorly as we played the other night, yeah, I, I would be I'd be fooling myself a little bit to say that, or we would have been very much disappointed. Uh, you know, having that good of a a run that we had made and, and coming up as the area runner up. So. Uh, it was a day that, you know, as soon as I woke up Thursday morning, <clears throat> five o'clock could not get here soon enough. And, and those outs, it seemed like, it seemed like they were hours to get by. And, uh, thankfully we were able to, uh, I think it was a little bit unusual. We scored a run in every, in every inning, all six innings, we scored a run. Um, you know, from the first inning, we scored one, we had two in the, the second. And I don't remember the exact number, but I, I knew that it was a very odd game that, uh, that we had the opportunity to uh, to score runs in each of the six offensive innings that we had. Um, CJ once again was okay. Uh, the sun played a factor. I mean, it was as bad as I've ever seen it at third base on that left side of the infield. Um, you know, choppers, and I, th I think Evan got two or three choppers that went right into the sun. So uh, we're going to try to find him a different pair of glasses uh, over the next week, and, and maybe he can wear wear something else because we'll have a five o'clock start on Friday. Um, and I really, you know, I, th I felt like without us kind of helping them and kicking around defensively, uh, I felt like that, that CJ was good enough to, you know, either shut them out or, or limit, to, limit them to, uh, you know, one, uh, one run at the most. Yeah, you, you mentioned in the uh, last week that it was critical to get off to a quick start, and I thought CJ kind of did that for you. How did that set the? How would you feel that set the tone for the rest of the game? The way he started it. Well, I felt the energy in the dugout was much different too. I mean, you you could feel that um, everybody was engaged, everybody was locked in, and 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 that's kind of how we built this thing on. It's not been about one person. It's not been about uh, one position, one one phase of our game. It's been. Uh, collectively a collective group that we're all kind of pulling in the same direction. You could feel it in the dugout. It was much different than it was uh, than it was Thursday night. And uh, like I said, you, to get off to a good start and have them chase us for a little bit, uh, we were able to do some really good things on the bases. I, I felt like that it, it got to their pitching a little bit where they were focused a little bit more on our base running, and it took some – uh, I, I guess some focus off the hitter and, and it allowed them to, you know, get behind in counts and we were able to get in hitters counts. And then when we got in hitters counts, we were able to make some good swings. Uh, we, but we had some good things go our way. We had a check swing double in the second inning. Uh, so, you, you know, to make a run in this thing, you have to have those type of, of things that happen. I mean, it, it's just, it's like an angels in the outfield type atmosphere, but, uh, but I think you create those things too, uh, by the way that you prepare, by the way that um, that you're engaged, by the way that your your, your plan is, and and I thought that was much different on on Thursday night compared to Tuesday night. 
Yeah, you mentioned the sun. Easy to kind of put that into play when it. I mean, both teams were impacted by that pretty significantly. And Brad, he, he actually made a great play on one early, but then when you have that high hopper and you're having to see the different the sun in different levels, but uh, you know he did try to manage it as best he could. But again, he never seemed to get down. Always picked himself up, and I felt like that kind of you know carried over to his teammates. Felt like though his that his positive energy. Did you see the same thing? No, I did. I mean, he's a low-key guy anyway. I mean, he's not going to get emotional one way or the other. Um, I did bring out to him yesterday at, at 5 o'clock that I fielded a ground ball at, uh, in, the, in the third base coaching box barehanded, and it didn't affect me at all. So um, I, I don't know if, it's, if it was the sun, you know, compared to the two days or, or, or different abilities. You mentioned doing a little, some little things, and Jack Kendrick tagging up on a, the foul ball over here first. A lot of guys are, you know, foul ball, they're kind of just spectate. You were coaching them or through the whole process, but that it could have been a big run right there, and a lot of guys don't take that opportunity. Those are the little things that you got to do to do right to, to, to advance. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we do, we do a lot of base running circuits, um, you know, prior to the season, and, and one of the rules in the base running circuit is, is we tag on all fly, ball, all fly balls that are foul, and – you know, you preach that, you preach that, you preach that, uh, and you know to have it happen uh, on the in the on deck circle um, was was unique. Uh, I don't think that I've ever seen that happen before. You know, a, a sacrifice fly from Cole Edwards to the uh, to the to the first baseman on the the first base on deck circle. Um, but you know, it's a constant. I give him a reminder. I give all of them a reminder. Hey, we're playing down angle. We're playing contact. If anything's up. Um, we're tagging, we're back, you know, so there's, there's very, you know, there's probably three or four or five different plays that we run at third base and, you know, he read it up and, you know, the way that we teach it is, is you're to go until, until we stop you. And I know the guy made an unbelievable play. I, I was, I was shocked that he was able to catch the ball. Uh, but you know, it pulled the catcher and pulled the, the, the pitcher as well. And we were able to still run there. So you have James Clements this week. They uh, they were the runner up in their area. Definitely a formidable opponent. Statistically, you guys seem to match up fairly evenly. So kind of give us a little preview of what uh, you expect. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been two or possibly three years since we've played them. I think the last time we played them was at <clears throat> uh, was at Oxford. Uh, you know, in a in an early you know mid February mid March type game uh, two or three years ago. But uh, yeah, twenty eight and, and twelve record. Um, <clears throat> You know they have come out of a uh, out of a very good area, uh, an area in which uh, Bob Jones won. Uh, in in doing, you know, it's Tuesday, but in doing some scouting, you have the opportunity to review, uh, you know, review numbers, uh, charts, um, video, those type of things. And uh, you know, the first thing that sticks out is they've got a they've got a junior pitcher. Uh, Luke Davenport, and we don't know if we'll see him in game one or game two, but he's an Auburn commit. Uh, so we'll have, we'll have our hands full with him. Um, you know, and then they have several other really good strike throwers behind him. They've got a side armor that's a senior. They've got a left-handed pitcher that's been throwing in their game threes. Uh, and, and then their, their bullpen is uh, – have a lot of depth in their bullpen. Offensively, uh, they do a lot of unique things. They, they – they bunt a ton. Uh, they're very, very aggressive uh, on the bases. I mean, we're going to have to be very prepared because they're going to put a lot of pressure on us uh, from their offensive standpoint. They do like to steal. They like to run and so uh, and, and, and base running, but they do get caught sometimes. So, I mean, um, you know, a lot of people haven't tested Clay throughout the year. Does that impact later in the season when he has to make those throws? Or is no, I think it does. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, I think that Clay's ready to – um, to defend that uh, by, uh, you know, I, I really I feel confident in his ability to, to defend that. Uh, but I th- also think it's important that, like I said, you get a three or four or five run lead, it prevents a lot of that. I mean, you can't take those chances and be as aggressive on the bases as, as you would if you were up a couple, a couple of runs. So I, I think the, you know, the tone of the game, the tempo of the game, the situation of the game is going to dictate a lot of what they do. Um, you know, and we've got to have – we had a really good practice yesterday with an inner squad. We've got to have another day, a good day of practice today. Uh, just kind of going over some of the things that they may see from, from, a, from a base running standpoint. And, and, 
you know, it's very aggressive. It's, yeah, I enjoy watching it. I mean, I, I, I enjoy the pressure, pressure, pressure. Uh, and if you can't defend it, you're going to get more of it. It's one of those type things. So uh, we got to be ready for it. We've got to, uh, we got to be composed when those things happen. We got to be prepared when those things happen. Uh, and, and like I said, I, I feel like that if we can do those things, you know, and make them chase us, you know, three or four uh, run lead, then it's going to prevent some of the, the chances and, and, and those type of things that they're going to, uh, to try to create. You know, you got a three-game series over two days. How critical is that first game? No, it's huge, uh, but I always say the second game's the biggest. You know, I mean, whether you split, whether you have won the first one, you get an opportunity to sweep or, you know, you lose the first one, you bounce back the second one, you get momentum going into Saturday. Um, and our, our staff is – we're a little unusual. I mean, because of all of our guys are fairly similar. You know, there's not a big drop-off from – you know, starting pitcher one to starting pitcher three, four, on down the line. We've got a lot of confidence in our bullpen. Uh, so we feel like the, the longer the series goes, uh, the more in favor of us that it goes. Uh, whereas, you know, some other teams are built with, you know, one dominant arm and they kind of fall off after that. Uh, that's not necessarily the way that we're built. Uh, but to answer your question, yeah, we, we'd love to win game one. I think game two is, is, is very much, if not more important. Weather. It looks like you got some weather coming in this week. you see any impact? No, I think it's going to be out of here by game time. Uh, it'll impact us on Thursday, so we'll probably pull the tarp. Uh, looks like Thursday uh, may be a wash, uh, and then we'll probably be able to pull it some, you know, at some point uh, Friday morning. Uh, but our field's in good shape. It, it, you know, it drains well. We're able to pull the tarp and pretty much play on the infield. We'll have, you know, some some spots in the warning track that'll that'll be some standing war, uh, water. But, you know, from a from a natural surface standpoint, it's uh, it's as good as any field that uh, that we've ever played on. I mean, it it'll do a good job of getting getting out of here. You know, if the weather we want the weather, and I, and I think the weather is going to be out before noon on Friday. You know, Coach Dunn just seems to know what to go out and say at the right time. You talk just real quick about Coach Dunn. I mean, he just really seems to be totally in tune with his pitchers and kind of what they need and what they're doing and, and goes out and says the, the right thing at the right time. No, I mean, we're very fortunate to have him. Uh, you know, in my opinion, he, he's the best at what he does. I mean, uh, he, he has confidence in those guys. Those guys pitch with an edge. Uh, he's very relational and personal with them. He knows how to connect with them, and, and that's – you know, that's coaching 101 right there. You know, the, you, you got to have the, the kids got to believe in you, and, and, and he's got their belief. And, uh, yeah, without question, I mean, I, <laughs> I've heard him say it before. He, he wished that he had a like an earpiece that he could tell him what to do before every pitch. Um, uh, but he does a great job with it, and, and uh, it seems to be very on point, too. You know, the, uh, the times that the kid really needs to be encouraged, he encourages, and, and when he needs to be challenged and pushed on, uh, he does that as well. So he's got a good sense of, uh, I guess, timing, the sense of timing. And, and you know, the, he, he, he understands the, the mood of the room as well. You know, we, got, we got a lot of comments uh, during the week, uh, Coach's show, about a comment you made last week, you know, that when you got back after the Chelsea game, you so made sure they realized that they're, you're pulling in the same direction. And, you know, Tony La Russa, players got to play. But the coaches put you in the position and give you the encouragement and the confidence you need. Is that something that you've had for years here? No, I think uh, – I guess yes and no. Um, you know, each team is different. Uh, you know, I think that it's important for the, the guys to know that, you know, not only are we in this together, but, you know, I, I'm not in the business of, of kicking you when you're down. And, and there was no, no hiding the fact that when we left Chelsea that night, every single one of them knew that we didn't play well. Um, and then praising you when you get up, like it's a roller coaster, and and I and I think you know if you can be consistent, um, and those guys see that, and and but when you're fake, and and when they can see through that as well, uh, so I think it's important that for them to uh, to realize, like, look, when when we when we stink, like nobody hurts as 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 much as we do, and you know if if we carry those burdens together, it's it's better on each of it. Uh, each of us and and I, and I think that this this team gets that um, 
And I think that's very important. And it's something that I think we have felt as we watch the games, not only from the coaching staff to the players, but from player to player. And I think sometimes that's very unique. Tribute to you and your staff of what a great job you've done, not only with this team, but building this program. So, And I think it's – like I said, I mean, to add to that, I, I think it's – you know, when something goes wrong, it's not about assigning blame. You know, we're not trying to look for it and, and assign blame. And uh, there's a lot of that in this world right now. And, and we're trying to be accountable for it. Like, okay, this is where we're at. Uh, this is the current situation we're in. How do we get better from it? And I, and I think each of those, whether you win, whether you lose, play, play well, play poorly, uh, is an opportunity to teach and is an opportunity to grow. Anything you want to add before Friday night? You know, playing two on Friday, one on Saturday is uh, a little unusual, um, you know, especially with the pitch count rule uh, because, you know, you got to take a sense of is this game a game that we're going to go after? Is this going to be a game that uh, we're too far behind? Is this going to be a game that we need to get somebody out and save them for Saturday? Because, you know, th- you throw more than 25 pitches then on a Friday, then, then you're – uh, you're not eligible to throw on Saturday, so you got to be a little bit strategic in, uh, in in how you, I guess, read the game and manage the game. Uh, I think that's going to be uh, a telltale sign. But like I said, I mean we've we've got some depth in our staff, and we're um, you know some guys that you know have thrown an inning or a batter here and there uh, within the last you know three weeks during spring break. We're going to ask you know you get into a third game, it's it's all hands on board and and. Uh, we're probably going to need every single one of them throughout this playoff. Yeah, and only eight, seven, eight teams hosting playoff series, and uh, I don't think Spain Park's hosted one since what 2012. Or, well, we've the first round we we've hosted one since the the first round was last time we hosted the first round was in 2012. Yeah, it's yes. been too long. It's been a long time, so you know, no place better to be on a Friday night than to come out and support your Jags. The weather should be out here, and it should be a nice night. And appreciate you joining us today. And go Jags. Go Jags. Uh, I mean, big game, you know, I was trying to make sure I was healed up. Uh, But coming into it, it's all about getting through the first inning. Once you get through that first inning, the first inning uh, inning jitters, uh, I kind of went on cruise control after that. Uh, well, I'm never, I'm never going to harp on my teammates for making a mistake. We're all going to make mistakes. Uh, I know they're trying their best out there. As long as uh, I'm doing my job, you know, we're, we're chilling. I mean, he threw an up and in pitch, and I – I thought I could get my barrel out, and I just swung, and I, it caught me kind of in the back of my swing. And I got the barrel to it. I just didn't ever finish that swing, and it just ha- happened to go right over the first base bag and go for a double. So what do you guys are kind of in there together? Is he making a switch? What do you say to him, CJ? I mean, I don't really have to say anything to him. He knows what to do. This is, this is where he eats right here. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, you know how I am. I'm always beating myself up out there, and it feels good to come back in the dugout and have a little lift. John Robert is a senior. You know, you've seen him. He's been taking on a lot of responsibility, not only to through some of the highs and the lows, but also to bring a pretty heavily laden junior squad with you, too, not only to take the reins next year, but to fill some roles. So does it kind of look like it's rewarding for you, to, not only as a senior, but to have done it for the group to, to win the Terry Championship? Yeah, I mean, all these guys can play. They all got heart. That's the biggest thing is just grinding out the game, and that's what we do well. So what's the difference, guys? What's the story between the different gloves from outfield and pitcher? Do you like the switch? Do you like the color or just a little bit of luck or just superstition? I like the color, but uh, my outfield glove is just a little bit too big to pitch on the mound, so the blue one's a little smaller. Well, you came in, you closed it out for your team. You know, CJ put you in a great – CJ, Kansas State Sports Radio player of the game. You set the tone. Really 
All-Star Cobra again next week. And so what are you looking forward to with Joe and the region? It looks like it'll be Bob Jones um, for the way it's shook out today. So uh, what are you guys looking forward to next weekend? Uh, I'm just looking forward to see our bats continue to pick up. I mean, they've been solid all season. Especially when I'm out there, I feel like I'm I'm getting treated out there. It's It feels good, you know, when you get the bats rolling. Uh, just got to get healed up, ready for next week. Just excited to play. Just go out there and keep doing what we're doing, and I think we'll make it pretty far. Congratulations, guys. First series championship, I think, since 2012. Uh, nice to be able to get a playoff game on the home, so, not home. So we wish you guys the best of luck. We'll be here. Go Jags. Go Jags. Thank you.